from Los Angeles, California, where the Mad Scientist Party at. Welcome back to another episode of Mad Scientist Party Hour. My name is Kevin Kraft, joined once again by a man who lost his pants and underwear in a poker match, and he's now making the best of the situation by jacking off in front of everybody. That's Jeff Clark. Then I'm going all in. What's up, everyone? And transmitting to us from the basement of the Alamo... The bearded, booger-eating bike thief known as Shuddy Boy. Yo. What's ah. going on, fellas? Just um, sweating, despite my AC being on full blast. That's fun. I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram story from today. Or, I guess on Friday as well. But some, like, big creepy sarcophagus ended up in Poop Slime Alley. I did see that. Did you see Do it, Shuddy? Any any origin story behind that? I did not, no. I have no clue. Um, I don't know, that just popped into my head now. So, I'm currently emailing it to myself. Maybe I can pull this up, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, stuff ends well, up in Poop Slime Alley. I need to give you screen share permission. I do need that permission. Before oh. I go get my smoking apparatus. Ooh, what are you smoking out of today, Shuddy? I'm just going to get one of the G-Pens, whichever one I can find first. I don't know what I did with it earlier. Um, Let's see. Oh, no. I bet you me downloading this video right now is going to uh, like fight for bandwidth. Amongst everything else. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Bear with me, everybody. Sorry. Old man trying to use technology alert. Um. Um. Open. File! Oh, goodness. Okay. I think. Oh, my God. I'm a fucking genius. All right. Here we go. All right. Now. Share screen. Select. This thingy. Oh, and Shuddy's not even here. Back. There we go. Okay. Sheesh. No, I wasn't. I wasn't frustrated with you, Shuddy. I I apologize. Okay, so look at this. It's like a. It it looks like a prop coffin. Like it's shaped like an old timey coffin or an Iron Maiden. Almost like it's from from the Flintstones or some shit. But it's got, like, hinges on it and that little bolt lock. Yeah, that's definitely a prop from something. That showed up <laughs> on uh, on Friday. And uh, I got, you know, when I was leaving for Carl's for the weekend, I saw it. And it's still there when I came back. And it kind of also reminded me, did you guys hear about, you know, they're shooting Beetlejuice 2? And I'm guessing, like, like every big budget production it shut down from the strike and a lot of what they're doing Actually, what's up i think it wrapped filming like two days before the strike started wow that is that is a stroke of fucking luck on their part because i've i heard that um they're making gladiator 2 and ridley scott who i think is like 85 or 86 is directing it and that got shut down and they supposedly built a lot of those sets so they don't have to rely on CG. <laughs> so they had to they had to shut down all that stuff but keep paying for the sound stages so they can house all of the props and costumes and all of that shit and all the sets and apparently it's costing them $600,000 a week. So I wasn't sure. I didn't know that Beetlejuice 2 had wrapped. But I thought maybe since I thought maybe they got shut down and people knew where they were filming. I think they're filming in Vermont and just bum rushed the set and stole a bunch of the shit. Like the um 
that statue that pins. Um, but it's, it's not. Why am I thinking Catherine O'Hara? It's not Catherine O'Hara, right? No, Catherine O'Hara is the mom. What are you in Beetlejuice? Exactly? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So her, that thing that pins her to the, the side of the house, that statue she makes. Yes. Apparently, that thing returns in Beetlejuice too, and people stole it. But doesn't that coffin look Beetlejuicey? It looks Beetle. It definitely looks like vampire movie esque. Yeah. Or like you find you're searching an ancient tomb, and that's what's in the. Is it in your apartment now? Did you bring it inside? No, I do kind of want to. I'm not gonna lie; it's kind of fucking cool looking. But How would I don't Carl wanna... feel about that? Oh, she would hate it. I feel like Carl would hate anything that I found in Poop Slime Alley and brought in. Yeah, I think that's fair. It's probably like cl- cl- crawling with fleas and hepatitis A through Z and the Black Death. I will say though, it's been it's been a good run with no poop slime alley disturbances. You should not have said that. I mean, I already thought it, so it's it's already it's already out in the, Tomorrow, the ethers. Tonight is going to be hell for you, buddy. Well, poop slime alley is going to come right to your door. I mean, yeah. look 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 behind me. I've got I still have super couch constructed. So if somebody wakes me up in poop slime. I have an easy backup to just sleep on on super couch. I've been trying to sleep in my room lately because it's just so fucking expensive to keep the AC going at night. But I also wake up four times a night drenched in sweat. It is super expensive to have the, the central air going. I think in the summer, one of our monthly electric bills are like $500. Cool. That's insane. Yeah. That I mean, is absolutely insane. I don't even have central air. I got this fucking thing. This piece of shit in the wall. Um, my sucks. electric bill include So the Quakertown Borough does the electric, does the trash removal, and obviously water and sewer. And my combined bill with the central AC is $240 for all of that. Damn. Man, and I keep wonderful. the house at uh, at 70 degrees. Jeff and I should just move in with you, and we can just call it Pooh Land. Huh. I haven't it hasn't gotten, that bad. It hasn't gotten that bad for me, but it's close. I mean, what a Patreon tier. We just have cameras in every corner of the, the ceiling, and it's a, a <laughs> 24-hour live stream. Yeah. So it's a twenty-five dollar MSP MSPH roommate tier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can flip through, but beware when you go into Jeff's room past midnight. See him spread eagle with his fucking junk covered in peanut butter. Come on, little mama, you can't be full yet. Oh my god, man, <laughs> that's the creepiest possible joke you could have told. I was afraid of where you were going with that, and that's not great either. Oh, Parker, are you hungry too? (laughs) Oh, jeez. Don't involve (laughs) Shuddy's dogs. (laughs) He doesn't deserve that. Uh, But yeah. Fuck me in the ass, I guess. Jeff. Got a big week. What do you mean? I fly uh, to upstate New York Wednesday. We got a wedding this weekend. Who are you staying with? And um, my buddy Galupi's family. I'm just going to crash in their house. They got a big ass, like, four bedroom house that none of them live at anymore because all the, you know, all their kids are grown up and moved out. So we're going to go there, or I'm going to go there. I don't have any more roots in upstate New York outside of the Galupi family because my parents both moved. Sucks. It's weird. So are any of the Galupi children going to be there or are you just hanging out with the Galupi parents? <laughs> they don't need to be there, but they are going to be. Yeah. I mean, hey, I'm, what's going, up, I'm, going to, I'm going to the youngest Galupi's wedding. That's, that's part of the reason why I'm going up there. And, um, the, uh, 
the middle Galupi, who's my best friend. He's going out there with his his uh, wife and kids, but they have plenty of room. They'll be fine. In their basement, they had they had. I don't know if they still have it, but they had like a a home theater, and they had like a big ass like. On a hundred inch screen projector that we used to watch sports on and play some Call of Duty here or there. So I'll probably be stuck in that room. But if the projector works, it'd be pretty sweet. I'm gonna try to get some Master Chef on that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so are you are you predicting any hijinks? Are you planning to rage at this wedding? Or are you gonna try and behave? Uh I don't know. I mean I'm going there's like obviously uh you know, my friend and then a, f- uh, a couple of our other friends are going to the wedding. So I'm down to party. Um, but Friday night, me, my brothers and my brother's girlfriend are going up there as well because it's also my mom's birthday. She's going to go visit with her boyfriend. So like the Clarks are pretty much invading Saratoga, return to Saratoga. So Friday night, I'm going to go out and party in Saratoga and I'm, I'm going to think I'm going to get after it. My, uh, brothers and my brother's girlfriend i'm excited for her to see it because like saratoga in the summertime when she's going is fucking rowdy it gets like the bars are jam-packed there's it's just a lot of fun really it's it can be a pain in the ass like if you live there but it's gonna be it's gonna be a blast i'm looking forward to it yeah i think i might have come to the conclusion that i don't think i can party anymore I think I can if I don't smoke pot. My issue is smoking pot. Like, I can't really crossfade and hang. Is that... Okay, because it goes both ways. So, I remember that hit me pretty early on. Like, if I started smoking weed and then it was like, hey, we're going to a rager. Like, every beer I consumed, I got more and more tired. And I was like, ugh, this is taking all of my fucking energy. And then, but if you get wasted on alcohol and then you smoke weed later in the night, then you get the spins and barf. I always found it weird that the two of, like, weed and booze just can't play nice with each other. I mean, my only pushback is I, I don't think, I think they can kind of play nice with each other. I just can't get after it, like, when I'm, you know, smoking pot and drinking beer, but I'm all right with just chilling on the couch and then eventually going comatose because of this. But like, if I'm going to, if I'm going to smoke pot and drink, I definitely have to drink first and then smoke pot at the end of the night. And I do it the only, all the straight through. You smoke weed the whole time you drink. If it's possible, absolutely. But I don't drink very much. And that's like, at this point it's like two drinks. So it's, Mostly just smoking pot with a couple of drinks. Yeah, that doesn't count. You got to get wasted. And I, I mean, Shuddy, you used to just like get blacked out drunk and do power hours of Four Loco before they changed the formula to something non lethal. Well, cease. <laughs> but I don't know. When was the last time? Oh, well, I guess you do. You still still go to those like punk shows and get wasted and go, oi, oi, oi. I mean, I was pretty fucked up at, I mean, I had like six drinks before the Misfits show and smoked before we drank, smoked after we drank, before the show, ate edibles. I I do it all at the same time. Man, still holding on for dear life, Shuddy. Yeah, dude, that's impressive. I'm not middle-aged. The the thing is though, I now know when to stop. I'm like, okay, I'm drunk. Now I'm I'm good. Back in the day it was if I'm still standing, I'm still drinking. <laughs> I've gotten better about that in recent years. Just turning down a shot that I know will, will fucking destroy me. Just that little tweak has uh improved my longevity. But I plan on getting after it Friday. I mean it's probably going to be hot. There's going to be a lot of people like out and out and about in Saratoga. I'm not going to really have weed. I don't think I'm sure my mom will bring some, but and you like, won't fly with it. No, nah. Galupi's fucking mom made me promise not to, not to bring any oh. weed or, or Altoids. They told her about that whole Altoid thing. You guys remember the story, right? 
Not uh, really. Nope. To see the Galoopy's party, uh, Galoopy's bachelor party in an Altoid case in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking told her and she like brought it up at his wedding. Um, Why then, did they like, tell her? I don't I have no idea. I have no idea why they would tell her. It was ridiculous. And I don't know. I, I, I call her just to confirm that I could stay at her house. I knew she was going to let me anyways, but I called her like last week and was like, hey, I can stay there, right? She's like, yeah, but you got to promise me you're not going to bring any ecstasy. You're not going to bring any Adderall. You're not going to bring any Xanax or marijuana. I was like, Jesus Christ. No marijuana. What a, What's up with that? I, I do yeah, like, you though, that me. you that you waited until last week to ask if you could stay there. What was going to be your backup plan had they said no? I was going to sleep on the street in front of their house. Yeah, Poop Slime Alley. Uh, their home is actually in the same neighborhood of the, as the uh, old Nexium Colt. Which, oh, so we're going to see if they had any vacancies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever, you guys can fucking brand my butthole if you need. Just let me sleep there for the weekend. Oh, you guys are full up this weekend? All right, that's fine. I'm just going to join a sex cult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they didn't allow me... Which would have been bullshit. I mean, again, I'm going to their kid's wedding. Like, they're going to be in town. I, I know it. I fucking know right, it. Right, well, you're going to their kid's wedding. They might have had a house full of guests already. That's true. I guess they're staying in a hotel. And I was like, <laughs> okay. Like, all right, well, yeah, we're just letting you know. I mean, you're probably going to be by yourself. And I was like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> that's cool. I'll, I'll make sure to clean up after myself. Yeah, Jeff is going to uh, just do a risky business in the house. Well, my, my brother, again, my brothers are going up there and they already got a hotel room. So I'm probably going to actually stay with them for a couple of nights and then you know, split the hotel room with them. Um, and like, you know, I have a few like lifelong friends that would let me stay up there that still are local. So I'd figure it out. I, I probably, no matter what, I was never going to pay for a hotel room. That was, that was, <laughs> that was never going to happen. Actually, I'm bullshitting because I might throw in for my brothers. But like that's the other thing because it's it's racetrack season. Like all the hotel rooms are up there, are fucking expensive right now. And so, so that also means because you're going to be gone into next week, so we're going to have to delay MSPH by like a day or two. It's going to have to be until Wednesday. I, I fly back next Tuesday. I fly out Wednesday, August second. Fly back Tuesday, August eighth. I believe that is. So. It won't land in uh, Long Beach until the PM, past Chevy's bedtime. So next next Wednesday, we'll have to pump out an MSPH for y'all. Hopefully, I have some shenanigans to talk about again. I'm gonna try to get after it with my uh, brothers and my brother's girlfriend, and obviously during the uh, hopefully the wedding gets get this fun and gets a little rowdy. But yeah, what's the what, I, uh, what's the the gambling line on which Clark brother is gonna puke in a car? I would probably be the favorite. Cheech hasn't really drank since him since he got alcohol poisoning in the back of uh, Brendan's car. <laughs> Bill is probably going to have to try to keep it together, right? Because he's on boyfriend duty. Yeah. So we'll have to, you know, not go down like that. So I would probably be the favorite because, I mean, I'm kind of going there for a bender, right? Like Friday... Is uh, party night with my family. Sat- Saturday is Wednesday. They all leave Sunday, and like I'm there until Tuesday, just chilling. So I'm down to like get fucked up and just recuperate. But I think I'll be able to hang again yeah, because I'm gonna be up standing. It's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be a lot of adrenaline. Well, you know, Oops. it's gonna be a, a long day at the track, so I'll be sweating out all the alcohol that I drink. So. I'll be good to go. Did um, but, I know I'm kind of backtracking here, but Shuddy Boy, did you see that somebody on YouTube pointed out that you had a ghost attack in your video? I I didn't have a ghost attack. The He Man fell off of the thing because this shook from me moving the chair. Oh, okay, all right. I was actually trying to like find that and pull it up because somebody time stamped it, but no, like, it, yeah, it was. I like moved back like this, and then I moved again, and He Man fell. 
Okay. I was having a difficult time that day getting him to stay up there, so he's currently just laying on the desk next to me. Because I look, I look back, and and like it didn't look like anything was shaking, and then He Man just falls forward, and Jeff and I, I don't think either of us noticed it. Yeah, no, I mean, I it, he had been falling all day on me, so right, I was well. not. I don't, I don't think it was the ghost, but. Well, that myth has been busted then. I was kind of bummed out because I was kind of hoping I might be able to replay that clip and freak you out. Sorry. So there's, no, there's, guys. it's all, it's all been quiet on the ghost front for you recently, Shuddy. It has been all quiet on the ghostly front. That's also unfortunate. That would be a big moment for us if we could uh, bring proof of the afterlife to the masses via our well when you guys move if you guys moved in here we could do uh msph like ghost adventures <laughs> we, we all we all I get thinking s- outside the box we all get soul patches and faux hawks and matching affliction shirts we're like oh did you guys hear that someone was reaching out and then we just do an edit where it replays in slow-mo oh no i think that was just my stomach gurgling sorry guys <laughs> matching faux hawks. We should do that anyways. Yeah. Hopefully, your- hopefully one of these Oscar um, things we end up tying on, and we all got to get a faux hawk and an affliction shirt. That's our punishment. And that's our, our next JC Penny photo shoot. We all go in with soul patches, faux hawks, affliction shirts, and then we take like spooky pictures. Yeah, I'm going to have by far the week. Well, Actually, what's your what's your facial hair game look like, Shuddy? Or not, Shuddy, uh, Kevin, if you let it grow out. I mean, we saw it during the pandemic. That's right. You know, there are there are still a lot of... Um, wait a second. What's going on here? Are we still recording? Like... The video. Says we're recording on the south left-hand corner. Oh, yeah, mine does, does too. That scared the shit out of me. You just gave me a fucking heart attack. Me too, because the thing is like, usually the thing to stop the recording is next to the share screen button and it's gone. And I was like, oh no, did me sharing the screen fuck this all up? My bad. Sorry about that, guys. Um, But yeah, there there are old YouTube episodes up where I have, you know, my questionable facial hair. And it's still patchy at best, but I think I could do, I could get the soul patch. It's just going to take me like six months to grow it. It's weird. I'm yeah. fucking. Mm. I'm 41 years old, and I, I still haven't hit puberty yet. One yeah. day, I'm right there with you in terms of the weak facial hair uh, game. So you know what I was kind of thinking though, Jeff. Shit. I think you and I might just be more highly evolved because cavemen were way hairier. So as as mankind continues to evolve, we have less need for hair, and we're just we're just advanced. We don't need that shit. It, it actually just means you're more women than I am uh, and have less testosterone. Fucking, I could fucking oh, wow. go through concrete right now. You have me so hard. Should he's calling out our tea. That's yeah, you have, lo- you, have, you have low tea, I guess. Those are fighting words. Is there a way? Can we, can we go get that checked? Like, Jeff, you have health insurance, right? Uh, my health insurance does not pertain to this stuff. It won't let me use it for these kind of things. It won't let you go get your testosterone checked? No, I don't want my tea checked and compare. Remember that uh remember the jackass where they had like the jerk off Olympics? <laughs> yeah. And they had uh, like the volume and they measured the volume of the cum, like how many sperm it has. Yeah. How quickly they got it out. <laughs> That's kind of what we're talking about here. That was a solid bit. Uh, a, a testosterone test is eighty nine dollars. I can't afford it. See, it's that easy. We'll just take it out of your Patreon cut for the month. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jeff's Oscar punishment is to have his tea checked. <laughs> I'm going to post it online. I have to write an article about it on Outkick. Yeah, you have to nut in a cup. Find out what your sperm sperm count is. And your tea count. Negative four. It's not even possible. 
What a what a turn of events though if they were like you have the highest testosterone we've ever seen and your nut is like that glue that keeps a new um credit card stuck to the stuck to the letter. <laughs> it's got that thick ass credit card glue come. You impregnated the tube. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, that would be it. That would be a great turn of events. I'm with you there. What else is going on? Did you guys see anything to to review? I've seen Barbie t- again, uh, <laughs> but still have not seen Oppenheimer. <laughs> get him, Jeff. Get him. Just don't right. get us canceled. Nah. <laughs> I, I hope he feels bad about it already. Well, what, what's your excuse behind that? Well, so I went... Barbie kicked ass, huh? No, so when we went and saw it on Friday, it was Sharon and I, and then Brad was there with his friends, and Michaela went with her friends. Draven was the only one that didn't go that wanted to see it. So him and I went, just the two of us, to see it last week. Right. That's a great, wholesome father-son moment, going to see Barbie. Yeah. Did you guys yeah, wear pink? Exactly. No. Yeah. Did I did not. Cosplay? I thought for sure that that had passed now that opening weekend was done, but it has not. There were more dudes dressed up at this Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening showing than there were at the Friday night showing. Man, it'd be funny if they called you a pussy for not dressing up. <laughs> Everybody beat him up. <laughs> but, Look at this fucking poser wearing black. Jesus Christ, he's wearing Kelly green. Carl and I went to the theater, and we saw like when we were walking out, there was like a group of women all wearing pink, taking selfies with each other. It was like, wow. Everybody, yeah, that's how it was by me too. To that pink shit. Yeah, I can't believe that still that. That's still uh, dressing up to go see Barbie is still a thing, but good for them. So, good Shuddy, them. Barbie's still a four dicker on the second viewing? Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Did you log yep. it twice on your letterbox? Your letterbox? <laughs> I haven't logged. <laughs> All right, you sound like Mark. I haven't logged it once yet on letterbox D. I don't think. Oh shit! You got to give that thing a double tap. So, Jeff, you went to the the theater this weekend. How did you like Barbie? I did, I did not see the uh, Barbie or go to the theater. I don't think. Oh, I thought you just said you were at the theater this weekend and you also saw people still wearing pink. No, I was saying that I saw people wearing pink and like dressing up in Barbie cosplay when I went and saw. Oh, opening weekend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I would just assume like it's not. Oh. I don't know. Like pretty much, if you just wear like a pink top or a pink dress as a girl that essentially covers it. That's pretty much Barbie cosplay. Sure. So I'm, I'm assuming like every, most women that go out and see it are going to just wear their pink Barbie get up. I don't really have anything to report from a movie or viewing front. I watched a documentary late last night about a uh, British uh, chick who went missing in Tokyo, actually which I thought was interesting considering how much you like Tokyo. Um, it was yeah. a Netflix documentary. It was only an hour and a half long, pretty short watch. Um, I didn't give it my full attention though, because they were interviewing a lot of Japanese investigators. So there was a lot of subtitles and I was on my computer simultaneously, but it was pretty good from what I caught. Um, <laughs> on wet melons. <laughs> is that what you were doing on your computer while you were watching that? Well, I found this no. new one called Wet Yam Bags. It's pretty hot. <laughs> no, I was uh, just looking at the NFL season up, the upcoming NFL season. But I'm glad that you brought that up because I have some things to discuss regarding that when you're done with your story and we're done with movies. Oh, can't, I right. can't wait. Um, but it was pretty good. It was about like. Um, a hostess girl at a Japanese nightclub or Japanese like uh, karaoke bars who got uh, abducted and ended up getting murdered. Um, pretty much a, a rich Jap spoiler alert, spoiler alert, a rich Japanese guy drugged her, kidnapped her, 
raped her, murdered her, and dismembered her. So that you, was fun. Do you drink box <laughs> wine when you watch these things? No. I, 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 I need to get some wine, though. I've been craving wine lately, and I just forgot to get it at the store a couple times. You really Wine's... are just turning into a middle-aged white woman. What are you talking about? I'm not going to see Barbie. Oh, I need my murder stories. Where's my rosé? <laughs> <laughs> it was a good short watch, and it was, yeah, I mean, I could have used some some wine while I was watching it. That's a good point, but it was cool. Um, I've always <laughs> wanted to get, in Koreatown, they're called Tomies, and it's just, like, host, like, hot chicks and dresses who like will go to like the private karaoke rooms and like fill your drinks up and talk to you and like laugh at your jokes and I don't know, just hang out while you're doing karaoke with the homies. Um, supposedly the more money you have, the further you get along, which makes perfect sense. Meaning but, they will pork you. Uh, yeah, supposedly that's what, that's what the homie Jeff Lee said. Wow. Well, but, if that's happening, chances are those women are trafficked. Yeah, on on all fronts that's too. Rough. By the way, in, that, in Koreatown and in Japan, that was what the inspectors were saying was the tricky part of investigating our case is that those workers are are usually like I don't know, like illegal aliens in Japan, and like their visas expire and they're no longer supposed to be in the company, but or in the country, but they could still work for these bars and like if anything bad happens to them they're kind of fucked well they're definitely fucked because they can't really call the cops right because they're already there illegally christ that is so horrifying and dark yeah i mean they brought a few of them on though and they were like like for uh, former hostesses they're like hey i've actually loved my experience it was so much fun and yeah we got this this horror story here but like by and large, me and all my coworkers loved it. It was like the perfect job for a girl in their twenties living abroad. I was like, no shit. Hopefully, they feel the same about that in Koreatown. I would love yes. to do the Tommy experience in Koreatown. Do some KBBQ, yeah. get some karaoke. All right, who wants to do some soju shots out of my belly button? <laughs> oh yeah, I would definitely provide a belly button for some body shots. Oh, yeah, here we go. Do we, line them up. Soju body shots on me. Come here, bitch-ass Paul. You want one? Literally on me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you? What did you and Carl see at the theater? So we went and saw that, uh, that new horror movie, Talk to Me, the A24 Ooh. one. Show me space. It was... Bradley went and saw it this weekend, and from what Draven says, Bradley really enjoyed it. It's fucking good. Was it? Yeah. I mean, I know I'm going to hate it, so I'm not going to go see it. But it's for not people who like a twenty four horror movies. No, it's not a twenty four y at all. It's actually just really? like a really well done, legit horror movie. It's directed I, so, by YouTubers, right? Yeah, that was I didn't know that until after the fact, and that kind of bummed me out. But it was just like, well. I mean, they fucking did it. It wasn't like... I've seen some YouTubers try to cross over into making mainstream movies and they just crash and burn and are terrible. But this one was fucking good. And it, it like... From what I saw, it outperformed all expectations and made a shitload of money. I mean, our, our theater was packed. And I also didn't realize it was Australian. So in the first five to ten minutes, it was I needed subtitles. I couldn't understand what these motherfuckers were saying. Subtitles for the English? Yeah. Because the Australian it's accents Australian. were so strong. Like, Carl and I both looked at each other and just shrugged. We're like, oh, I don't know what that guy just said. But once it got going, it was creepy. I, so I went in. I never saw a trailer for it. I didn't read a synopsis. I just went in blind. Because it got to the point where I was like, all right, I've avoided, without even trying, I've avoided all knowledge of this movie up until now. It's getting good reviews, so fuck it. I'll go in. I'll go in blind. I think that's how I saw It Follows as well. I just saw that it was getting really good reviews. Um, I actually went with uh, former MSPH guest, Ilya Neischuler. He just hit me up and was like, hey, go into the Arclight to see this movie tonight. You want to go? I was like, yeah, I actually heard it's really good, but I don't know shit about it. And he was like, same. Let's fucking do it. And 
Wait, it was you went and saw it talk to me with him or no? No, no, no. It follows. It follows. But okay. talk to me, I don't feel like talk to me you necessarily have to go in blind. It wasn't like some huge reveal or anything. It was basically like it kind of reminded me like if you crossed a Ouija board with the stupid like the pass out game. Like when I was in Bing Boing school, we were big on the pass out game where you Is that where you like push yeah. Yeah, you like you basically hyperventilate yourself. You like put your head between your knees and like <gasps> like hyperventilate a bunch and then take a deep breath, whip your head up real quick, stand up against a wall, and then you exhale as much as you can and people like press on your chest and you just fucking pass out and collapse. Like incredibly dangerous. Never in a million years I should I have done it. But I was a fucking dumbass and I did it in my Bing Boing school dorm room. And I remember the first time I did it. I passed out and I was just back home and it wasn't, it didn't even feel like a dream. I was just, Oh, I'm back home now. And I just went about basically a whole day of menial bullshit and then woke up and I'm back in my dorm and I was like, what the fuck just happened? I was like, how long was I out for? That felt like an eight hour dream. They're like, dude, you were out for like 30 seconds, but you turned beet red and you started twitching and shit. It was a little scary. (laughs) I was like, oh fuck! Like a DMT experience. Yeah, I put my I put my hands in the life of fellow high school bing boingers. Like, thank God they knew when to stop pressing on my chest. But it, the essentially the story of the movie is, they go to parties and somebody has this ceramic hand that's covered in writing, and if you light a candle, hold it, and say, "Talk to me," you see a ghost, and if you say, "I let you in," that ghost possesses you. And they have to, like, the rules are that you have to sever the connection and blow the candle out within 90 seconds or else something bad will happen. And apparently it's like, it's almost like a high because, like, they pass it around. It's almost like doing fucking whippets or something. They're all, like, everybody laughs and they film it and they put it up on social media. And pretty much everybody takes a turn and they all say it feels really cool. And, you know, obviously, of course, it's a horror movie, so shit goes wrong and things go off the rails and it gets really fucking creepy. But it was well done, man. I thought it was fucking cool. Um, If you're looking for... How long was it? 90 minutes. How fucking sick is that? Really? They never make yep. those movies that long anymore. And it, it, I, I, I have a feeling that they're gonna, there's going to be a return to form because... People are just getting annoyed at these really long movies. I mean, I know Oppenheimer made a shitload of money, but anytime people were talking about it and they're like, oh, yeah, and it's three hours long, everybody with an earshot was just going, oh. And every minute of film, like in a movie, costs a lot of fucking money. And Mm -hmm. studios are kind of, I mean, especially on some of the superhero shit, DC in particular are just losing like hundreds of millions of dollars on these long ass superhero movies that people are just kind of over like the flash. I think was the biggest flop for Warner brothers ever. So I really hope that this, as Ezra Miller or whatever. Yeah. I, I, you know, if a movie needs to be three hours, by all means go for it. There are fucking awesome movies. Isn't Armageddon really long? Yeah. Uh, and you watch I mean, that what, long enough, but... eight, eight times a year. So there are times where it works to have a long movie, but don't make it that long if it doesn't have to be. Fuck. Oh, two hours and 33 minutes. It's a long movie. Actually and that was like, right. But at the time that was like, that was like, you saw two out, two and a half hour movie and you're like, Oh, I mean, yeah, Back in the, it's not like a new thing. I mean, Gone with the Wind is four hours long. Right, but they were. it's a much more common thing. Because think about it, like digital media has made it a lot easier to distri- mass distribute longer movies because theater-wise, you don't have the reels that you have to worry about anymore. Yeah. Which, and... At home media is now almost all digital, so you're not having to put out like Titanic, Gettysburg, Godfather, all those two VH, you know, two tape movies. Yeah. I mean, I still remember 
one of the first DVDs I ever bought was Goodfellas. And that was a two-sider. So halfway through the movie, you had to pop the DVD out and flip it. Oh, I forgot about the two-sided DVDs. Yeah. Before I forgot those layers. even existed. Yeah, before they had dual-layer DVD technology where it burns on two layers on the same side, there were some movies that were too long to be on one side. Yeah. But, I mean, I'll give Talk To Me four dicks. I'll suck four Talk To Me dicks. <clears throat> it was cool story. Didn't reinvent the wheel, but had good scares. Really fucking creepy. Freaked the fuck out of Carl. I went to nice. when we got back from the theater. I was like, I'll take I'll take Lucy out. I'll walk the dog. And <laughs> I know you're still dealing with this. I got I got like fifty feet away from her door until I heard her yelling my name out and running after me. And she was like, Yeah, I didn't want to be alone. I'll, I'll walk the dog with you. Oh wow, she Which, was that freaked out. I've never seen that reaction from Carl before, so it got her good. And we also watched a new Netflix movie, which. I want to put on your guys' radar because I fucking loved it. Um, Oh. Have you heard about They Clone Tyrone? Nope. Yes, I've heard about it. I was going to see it. Fuck, it's good? Yes. It's with Jamie Foxx. Yeah, dude. Jamie Foxx and John Boyega. Um, I guess I won't spoil the big cameo, but another big name actor who's awesome. And um, this other other actor who I'm not familiar with, she was the female lead. Tayona Paris, holy shit, she fucking crushed it. She was awesome, uh, really funny. Her delivery was great. It, it's like a, it's like a modern day movie, but it, it's shot kind of grainy and almost looks like it's from the seventies. But it was really funny. It's like a, a sci-fi movie that takes place in the hood with John Boyega, who's a drug dealer, Jamie Foxx, who's a pimp, and um, Tayona Paris, who's a hoe. And they uncover, like, this big, crazy conspiracy going on in their town. Like, Jeff, it is right up your alley. I I read the synopsis, and I wanted to check it out. I'm a little pissed that I forgot about it. We should be on the same uh, wavelength for this, so my apologies. Yeah, I just clicked into this... uh, Tiona Paris, Wikipedia, see what her deal is. Apparently, she went to Juilliard, and she was in Candyman. Yeah, I've, I still haven't I don't seen remember the, if I even liked that movie. I still haven't seen it. the The remake. What? The one from that's crazy. Two years ago. Yeah, I know. Did I give it a bad what? review, or why haven't you seen that? Yet? I think it got bad reviews. <clears throat> I remember I enjoying that for the most part. I mean, it's on Prime. I should check it out. <clears throat> but, yeah, I mean, they cloned Tyrone. Fucking rules. Like, it was... Okay, I'll check it out. Hysterical. It's got really good music. Like, the score and the actual soundtrack. It's fucking great, man. It's a really good movie. It kind of it reminded me a little bit if, like, uh, it had a bit of a Stranger Things vibe to it as well. And just, like, the stuff Jamie Foxx says was awesome. Like, his, his character was so fucking funny. It's really good. I think, I think both you guys will like it. It's, I, I'll, I'll suck, like, 4.25 clone dicks. All right. I'm fucking, I'm going to check it out. Maybe I'll do that tonight, actually. Um, and then the final thing I got, I don't know your guys' thoughts on this, but they just put twist, the Twisted Metal series out on the cock. I have no interest in seeing this. I didn't, well, I didn't play Twisted Metal in, uh, on P- it was PS1, right? I think it might have been PS1, and then the second one might have been on PS2. PS2. PS, Twisted Metal 1, 2, and 3, I want to say, were on... Oh, uh, I actually, I know Twist, Twisted Metal 2 was the first one that I played, and that was on PS1. Okay. In my head, it was N64 versus Dreamcast versus PlayStation 1, and I was a N64 guy, and then I jumped on the PlayStation, that PlayStation 2. 
So that's why I never played Twisted Metal. I used to, because I didn't have a PlayStation 1. My cousins had one, and I used to play Final Fantasy VII at their place a lot. But my my buddy Domingo, when I was in middle school, mm. he had um, a PlayStation. So after school every day, we would go to his place and play Twisted Metal 2, like, all the time. Like, I love that fucking game. And it didn't really Twisted have... Metal f- What's up? All the way through, Twisted Metal 4 were on PlayStation 1. Oh my god. I did not realize that. Twisted Metal Black in 2001 was the first one to come out on the PS2, it looks like. Hmm. I don't even know if I played that one, but we played the shit out of 2. I I went back and retroactively played 1, and I was just like, eh, 2 is better. Because it was was basically just a, a demolition derby that takes place in some locale like you can choose different maps and they were usually places around the world and you just pick your racer and your 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 car or whatever and it comes with its own special move and you just launch missiles and attacks at each other until i think there's one person standing but there's all these like little hidden things like in, i remember in paris you could knock the eiffel tower over and then drive across it to a hidden area and we used to just like rush home after school and try to figure out if there were any like hidden areas we hadn't found yet. But making a TV show out of it was weird because there wasn't really much of a story at all. It was basically just yeah, a crash up derby. And they have um what's his guy? Or what's his name? The star Anthony Mackie, who's pretty good. Yeah. I feel like they he gets just like shitty roles. Like it, it feels like he's trying to to, to be like the leader of like a franchise and just keeps picking or getting offered the wrong things and none of them pick up. Well, I mean, he's got the Marvel thing always going for him. I mean, he's, he's what the star, that? he's the star of Captain America three when that comes out. Okay. Never mind. That's pretty legit, I guess. But they, they did kind of create a cool story. So it's like society fell in 2002 and all the major cities yeah, put like barriers up and walled their their cities off, and everything in between is just chaos and savagery and people killing each other and doing fucked up stuff. So Anthony Mackie is basically a courier that gets sent to go in between the big cities on on runs and shit. And that they got like even though I played the fuck out of Twisted Metal two. I don't really remember any of the racers other than Axel, who was the dude just in between two giant wheels, and Sweet Tooth, the creepy clown driving an ice cream truck. Well, I, I mean, I remembered we're five, Draven and I are five episodes in. Okay, um, I am eight episodes in. Okay, so I remembered like. I think it's the first episode when you see the hearse. I remember that one. Obviously, the cop car. Yeah, with Thomas Aiden Church playing mm-hmm. Agent Stone. I don't want to spoil too much, but there are other characters that have shown up in these five episodes that as soon as they showed them, I remembered. I was like, oh, that's that person. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've hit a few of those as well, but I, I, I watched the first episode. And I was like, all right, not horrible. That had some fun destruction. It's violent. It's it's incredibly campy. It's very, very silly. And since society stopped in 2002, all the pop culture references and music selections are all from that era, which has been kind of entertaining. But I don't know. I'm, I'm digging it. Like It's not the greatest thing in the world. Uh, but it's... When an episode ends, I'm still just like, all right, I'm... I'm ready for more. Like I'm going to finish it tonight. I'm mixed on it. It's on Pete on the cock. Okay. So they've, they fired them all out, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's all right. I think it's pretty fucking cheesy. Um, it's cheesy, but it's kind of fun. Yeah. I, I, it's enough that I'm, we haven't given up on it. Like there are some really good parts. Towards the and end of the some... season, you get uh, Jason Manzukis. 
Do you? I always enjoy seeing him pop up in things. Of course. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, we're going to finish it, but it's not great. It's not like the boys. No, 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 no. It's not the boys. But, I mean, if you like the characters, it's not an abomination to the game. It's got a good cast. You got Anthony Mackie and um, Stephanie Beatrix, the Rosa from from Brooklyn Nine Nine, you know Thomas Hayden Church. He's the fucking man, and Sweet Tooth is voiced by Will Arnett, who they made incredibly goofy. Yeah, it, he's fantastic. Uh, but from what I saw, because I was looking at it on IMDb, and it's got a bad score on Rotten Tomatoes, but the audience score is really high. So I was looking at each individual episodes, and it looks like the last two episodes of the season have like really, really high reviews. So I'm kind of just curious to see what happens in those that got people all pumped up. I don't know, maybe some cool cameos, maybe some crazy shit, but yeah, I mean, I'm kind of right there with you. It's like, I'm going to finish it. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's fun, it's entertaining, and it kind of I'm always they like they clearly didn't give them a huge budget for this, right? And it's like why money ball, baby? Why even bother? It's like they they kind of did this with when they took Paper Girls, which was a comic that I loved, and they put it on Prime, and they clearly gave them like twenty dollars to make the show. So if you don't have the money to make an existing property that's kind of crazy and obviously going to be expensive to do it right. Why shoot yourself in the foot and fucking like Amazon Prime canceled Paper Girls, I think before it even finished its run. And it's like, yeah, of course, because it's a big, crazy sci-fi story, and you gave them nothing for the budget. So of course, people watched it and were kind of just like, meh. That's the studio thinking where something we're not sure of, we're going to give a low budget, and if it does well, we'll increase it for season two. Yeah, but it's like nobody's going to watch it if you don't get people hooked. Except the model has worked for them on on some things. Like they wouldn't be doing it if it hasn't worked out for them in the past. I guess. I mean, the only success story I can think of is that Castle Castlevania anime that they did for Netflix. Like the first season is four episodes, and it's like really four fucking episodes. That's all you were gonna commit to. But people were so rabid over it that they, you know, it ran like four or five seasons, and now they're doing a whole new series. I think that comes out in September. But I don't know. I would I would personally like to see a season two with a bigger budget. But I don't know. For now, if you like the video game, it's worth checking out. Yeah. If you've got, if you've got nothing else on your plate, definitely a good fill, fill in until something else comes out. Yeah. And I guess we also have to touch on the... Uh, the sadder news. Oh yeah, that we all just saw texted the group chat about it. I did not think this was on Earl's radar. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of on everybody's radar. Pee wee, Pee wee yeah. Herman croaking was, at seventy. Those were like some of the first words that Draven said to me today. Was did you see Paul Rubens died? Dumb. And I was it's, you. You refer to him as Pee wee Herman. Have some respect. It was like. You're full of shit. Did, and you, then I did you ground him for being the, the messenger? Fucking typhoid Mary? No, I didn't. I didn't. Teach him his fucking lesson. That's what you get for telling me bad news. Yeah, let me find out about it on on Threads. Or X. <laughs> yeah. Let me zeet about it. It's a fucking bummer. Yeah. Yeah. He went out like a like, G too. He, uh, he, I guess he battled cancer that he didn't talk about publicly. That's yeah, with a pulled the Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman, yeah. Sad man. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of interesting. Like, so he was a he was an improv comic, and I think he was in Groundlings, and he just created the Pee Wee character, doing like improv work. And then I guess he liked it and saw something there, and him and Phil Hartman just sort of ran- rounded the character out. And I think 
it kind of started as more R-rated. Like, I think he did a comedy, a peewee comedy special in, like, 1981 that was R-rated, which I've never seen. If I remember correctly, and then he used it to, as his audition for Saturday Night Live, and Lorne Michaels told him that it would never amount to anything. Yeah. Lorne Michaels doesn't always have the, the right call. He's got some whiffs under his belt. Like firing Adam Sandler. <laughs> Did he? I yeah. I never, I never knew that. It's interesting. But uh, I, I just don't... thought that Adam Sandler moved on and had a sick career. A lot of the SNL cast members, I don't know, he got fired. Do you know why he got fired? I could be talking out of my ass. You might have to shuddy me here, shuddy. But I think Lorne Michaels just didn't think he was all that funny. And I don't think he liked his characters, so he just shit canned him one year. Uh, it, yeah, I wouldn't have uh, way fun. No, it so says that SNL has Carly? had received really poor ratings for the past couple of seasons, so NBC wanted to go in a new direction to revamp viewership, which meant shuffling in new talent and kicking out old names. Hmm. Either way, bad call. I mean, that was the the era that I first started watching SNL. But yeah, I mean, Pee Wee. The it was such a fucking weird character, and it's so strange that it resonated with so many people across so many generations. Like even young kids today still like Pee Wee when their parents put it on for them. Like I watched, I just watched. Pee Wee's Big Adventure a few months ago with Carl because she had never seen it and she loved it. Pee Wee's Big Adventure might be a five dicker. Jeff, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you are not a Pee Wee fan growing up. No, not at all. What the fuck is up with this guy's voice? He sounds funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. It's uh, not the right time to talk about this, but I definitely thought Pee Wee Herman was going to get. Like, not homosexual, just like I thought the whole character sucked and I didn't get it. It was, like, not over my head, but it wasn't something I was into. I always, because I I feel like, you know, I was a very, very weird fucking kid. You're a weird adult. Yeah. And then seeing Pee Wee be such a weirdo, it kind of made me feel cool about myself for being the weird kid. To this very day, anytime I eat ice cream at at any time, I reach a point whenever I eat ice cream in a bowl that I turn it into ice cream soup because of Pee Wee Herman <laughs> from seeing it on Pee Wee's Playhouse as a kid. Anytime I'm eating my Mr. T cereal in the morning. So what does that mean? You just let it melt? I yeah, I make you it melt a little into, bit. Yeah, until it's a like almost a liquid. Yeah. No. Well, I mean, you can relate to that, for... right, Jeff? You like to get food and let it just fucking sit there for a while before you eat it. I don't let ice cream melt, <laughs> but that's that is that is a Jeff Clark move. I think. I, Tangentially. Yeah, we'll let that one slide. Uh, like, yeah, as a kid, I'm sure someone at Puminati will correct me. Pee Wee Herman coming on was like the greatest sound I could hear, like his theme song. And then I just remember the crippling depression that would hit me when the credits ran. I was never ready for it to be over. I mean, let's be honest. Without Pee Wee's Playhouse, we wouldn't have Larry Fishburne. Yeah, Cowboy Curtis. Yeah, I've even got one of the DVD sets right here. I think it only has like the first two seasons, but I'll probably smoke a bowl later and fire these up. Did you see it when it was on Broadway? I did. I I thought so. I actually got to go with... um, 
Steve Brandano because he had a connection with Phil Lamar, who was playing um, Cowboy Curtis in the Broadway show. So Phil like, Lamar of Mad TV, correct? I uh, believe so. Yeah, um, Samurai Jack, big big voiceover guy. Also, I believe he got his brains blown out in Pulp Fiction all over the car. But uh, Carbon. so we got to actually when the show ended, which was awesome, we got to go up on stage and walk through the playhouse, which just immediately transformed me into a little kid. I was like, holy shit, I'm in the fucking playhouse. You got to be kidding me. And we didn't get to meet Pee Wee, but we did get to meet Phil Lamar and hang out in his dressing room and bullshit with him a little bit. And then I, on the way out, they, he did a bit where Pee Wee was like deep frying things and he was making onion rings and I stole one of the prop onion rings. And I've since lost even it. Even though you hate onions? Yeah, even though he hates onions, he steals an onion ring. I mean, can you blame me? It was a it was a prop from a from a Pee Wee thing. I mean, I guess your love for Pee Wee Herman's stronger than your hate for onions. It wasn't like a real onion. Because and I there, ate it because because there weren't any other props the same size that you could have stolen. Yeah, it was the smallest thing that I could have taken with me and not getting caught. Sure. Which I don't know. I probably shouldn't be admitting that I did that, but if you say so, <laughs> that's not too late to get in trouble, Kevin. Yeah, I think enough time has passed where nobody is still on the Yeah, I think we're through the, the statute of limitations. Yeah, no one is still looking for that one missing onion ring prop. <laughs> In a couple of days, so- there's going to be a, a letter from the Pee Wee Herman estate. <laughs> <laughs> we have been searching high and low for this fucking onion ring, and we finally got you. We finally know who took it. We are giving you the fucking share. We're no longer part of the Illuminati or the Puminati. Um, but yeah, it's a bummer. It's it's always weird when it just happens out of nowhere. It's weird that we are getting to that age, like where we're old enough now that the people who were quote unquote younger when we were kids are now at dying ages. It's kind of fucking freaky. It is. It really fucking is. I don't like it. I mean, Pee Wee <laughs> just made uh, like a Netflix Pee Wee Herman movie seven years ago. He was still playing Pee Wee in his 60s. That was seven years ago already? Yeah, dude. Wow. 2016. And it wasn't the greatest, but it was... It was fun. It was worth watching as a, as a Pee Wee I'm pretty fan. sure Stephanie Beatrice... Beatrice is in that as well. She is. She's in Pee Wee's Big Holiday to tie it all back together. I had never, I watched it as an adult because I never knew it existed, but the Pee Wee Herman Christmas special. I watched that one year back in Jersey. Like, it just scrolling, I think it was like on Netflix or something, but I was like, wait a second, what the fuck is this? Oh my God, it's from the 80s? I have to watch this right now. And my grandma was very bummed out because she found it all very strange and didn't get it. <laughs> but that was a cool watch and uh, yeah it's a bummer man Pee Wee was like a big part of my, my childhood uh, the day he got in trouble and there was no more Pee Wee Herman was a terrible day for my as a child yeah that was like our you 9-11 you know what he got in trouble I don't remember exactly when I understood how it was explained to me, <laughs> but I remember that the way it was kind of explained to me by my father was that he was in a movie theater and did something he wasn't supposed to do. Yeah, for the longest time, I was like, I thought Pee Wee just took his, he went to see like, look who's talking or something and pulled his dick out. I'm like, oh, what a weird thing for him to do. And then once I got a little older and found out he was in a fucking porn theater where people jack off constantly, that would be like, yeah. that would be like, oh, breaking news today, Pee Wee Herman is in hot water because he went to a dispensary and then bought marijuana in there. It's like, oh, that is not the place for that. No one buys weed at dispensaries. Get the fuck out of here. 
Could you imagine being the cop that does that patrols fucking porn theaters and like arrest people? Like that has to be the lowest form of police work. Yeah, it's like who are you? Who are you getting? Like, no one's <laughs> sleeping more soundly at night because someone jerked off in a porno booth and is now arrested. Do you know how probably on edge and how close that person is from just sputtering off the deep end and you're going to fucking arrest them for jerking it. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. That was bullshit. Fucking took like, it's one of those things where like everybody knows that blippy diarrhea all over his friends, but nobody canceled his ass because kids aren't going to realize that like kids watching Pee Wee's playhouse aren't making the connection. So like, just, just fucking let him skate and don't don't tell the kids about it. That's a great point, actually. How does Blippi not get canceled nowadays and Pee Wee Herman got canceled back in the 90s? Yeah. Because he pissed off the here. wrong people. Who, do we know what porn he was jerking it to? Was it Wet Melons? Well, so the theater was showing the movie, the movies Nancy Nurse... Turn Up the Heat, and Tiger Shark. And it apparently was a big thing because him and three other people got arrested at the same... The crackdown. Yeah. They got the it was whole a raid. Theater. It was a raid. Wait, wait. They were probably like, well, wait a second. We're all cool with this. No one's pressing charges. How about you just let us walk away? Yeah, for Dude. real. You know? Imagine being one of the cops on that bus. You're like... You're hiding behind the seats. You're like, all right, get ready. On the count of three. Three, two, ah! <laughs> oh, my God. Is that Pee Wee? Oh, my God, he's jerking off. Get him! Like, you could have could have just been like, oh, fuck. You know what? Let's come back tomorrow. Let's do the raid tomorrow. We can't, we can't nuke Pee Wee. But they fucking, they run in. They turn the lights on. They got their fucking guns out, right? That's some image. That's... The scenario I'm picturing. Before you, before you say, head. put your fucking head there. Before you say that, Kevin, let's see if you guys can let's let you guys guess what state it happened in, and then see if you feel differently. Oh, it's got to be a no fun state, right? Oh no, wait, <clears throat> it was probably California. The Cal- yeah, like, L.A. Say California. They still have tons of like jack off theaters, and nobody bothers. Sarasota them. County, Florida. Oh god, oh, of course, on. the fucking fun police of Florida. They're the ones that robbed us all of more and more years of Pee Wee Herman. Thanks, Florida. You know how much bigger fish you had to fry on that probably same neighborhood? Yeah, you couldn't you couldn't go and pinch some guy who was making meth while fucking his cousin? That's a double whammy. Gotta go get yeah. fucking Pee Wee in a porno theater, huh? Yeah, I wouldn't even get charged with. He didn't do any real time. No, but it killed his career. It Dude. was b- exposing himself. That's what he got. The lights were off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody would have seen his dick if those fucking cops didn't turn the lights on. Yeah, it didn't shine their flashlight around. <laughs> now, I hear uh, what you're saying. Won't that just shine more light on the penis? That's a risk we're going to have to take. That has to be one of the lamer ways someone's gotten canceled or taken down. Yeah. I mean, just hearing the stories that Ellis told from going to those, like, jerk-off booths, it's like, if you're not jerking off, it's, like, considered rude. You kind of have to whack it. Which jerk-off booths did he go to? I don't know. I lost count. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, people would, people pork in those theaters. And then everybody crowds around them and jacks off and cheers them on. Is that true? Yeah, dude. (laughs) I might have to go check out one of these theaters. Yeah, you. I don't. I don't know if you're gonna like what happens in there. <laughs> it's not my speed. Fair no, enough. No, no, I'll no. take your word for it. It is probably not the pretty people in there doing stuff like that, Jeff. All right. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I heard stories that you would be sitting in your seat, and all of a sudden, in between the two seats, a penis would be like. Boo! I'm like, huh? Huh? Want to give it a whack? Give this, give this thing a whack. 
Hold my finger, except not my finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you. I'll, I'll leave Jeff out of it because he's, you know, a fucking heathen. Huge character character flaw right there. Ah, I just don't see the humor in Pee Wee. But, Shuddy, did you ever watch Big Top Pee Wee? Yes. Because I watched that all the time as a kid, too. I think it was on HBO a lot. But when they came out on HBO, it was on all the time and it was on the television all as frequently as it could be. Yeah. And I remember loving that, it, but I have not seen it since I was a kid. I haven't seen it. I don't know. I might have seen it when the boys were little. They might, I might have gotten Pee Wee's Big Adventure and Big Top Pee Wee from Netflix back then. Um, oh, when they were doing the discs? Yeah, or Blockbuster, whichever one I would have gotten it from. Uh, but I have not seen it in a long time. I know that um, – oh, my God, I'm drawing a blank on his name – is the Wolfman. Benicio Del Toro. Benicio Del Toro. Yep. He's the Wolfman in Big Top Pee Wee. Chris Christopherson is in it. Yeah, the, uh, the, the super cute chick from uh, Hot Shots. Yeah. Um, isn't Carol Kane in it? I don't know, but I'm almost scared to give it a rewatch because I looked it up after you know hearing the news. And it's on Prime, but it's got really bad reviews. I think Pee Wee goes to the bone zone in it. Yeah, Pee Wee sex scenes? It's, only in pla- in, it's an implied sex scene. He stays it's in character the whole time. time. Ah! 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 I'm good at that! <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Top Gun 2 sex scene. Yeah. Where you just, just see them in bed together and they're laughing and light kisses, but... Tickling each other. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know if Pee Wee was gay or straight, but like... I wonder if any time he, he was gay. if he went to the bone zone in real life, if his uh, his partner ever requested the Pee Wee voice. Oh, someone! Oh, please plow me, plow me as Pee Wee. So, uh, one of these chicks had to have. <laughs> what do we get? I mean, what are we doing here? You know, the secret word of the day is jizz. <laughs> ah! Dude, that has to be like a lock. I wonder how many girls has him to to, to, to fuck them as Pee Wee Herman. Look at that scene in, in Funny People when Adam Sandler's boning that chick and she's like, oh, fuck me like Merman. Fuck me, fuck me like Merman. He's just like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same type of thing. <laughs> has to be. Yeah. I mean, there's no oh. way Pee Wee Herman didn't get some pussy. Unless he was gay. And, and which was case Paul he, he Rubin's was, gay? I, mean, I don't know. What, what was Tiger Shark? I feel like that was a straight porn. What, um, yeah, I mean, those those movies titles that Shuddy listed off, they sounded like straight porn. Yeah. But who knows? He could have been watching I feel like dudes. it would have definitely gotten out had it been gay porn. Yeah. Like that would not, have, especially at that time period, it would not have been left out. Just like they did not hesitate to out George Michael for going to a glory hole. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. You go to a glory hole, no idea who who's on the other end. Dick's po- dick pops through. Wham! Yeah, sorry. Bad dad it's a joke. good one. That was a good one. I, I enjoyed it. Wake uh, me up before you go, go. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to go get a I'm gonna refill my coffee. What the fuck? Is that Wham? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to the other guy? Did he just, he just quit when George Michael was in the glory hole? I think George Michael just ate him. George <laughs> Michael went on his own and had a solo career and was in the throes of that when he got in trouble for... A lewd act. Yeah. I don't know. It's all consensual. What's, what's the issue here? 
feels like Pee Wee Herman got the raw deal in the porn theater. Seemed like it was an ollie ollie oxen free of jerking off. Yeah. Fucking yeah, but I mean, at least the they department. at least they arrested everybody that was in the theater. Yeah, they got yeah. they got Cherry and Clocky and Cowboy Curtis. There's a whole Rico act on uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Globy, <laughs> they got him. Jombie. Jombie. Yeah, Jombie, <laughs> the human glory hole, just a floating open mouthed head. The disembodied genie head. <laughs> Yeah, he's always talking about your lick a lick a hiney hole. Dude was <laughs> dude was always suspect. That was that was Pee Wee's flashlight. When the cameras were off, Jombie took a fucking beating in that playhouse. Are you saying Jombie? Yeah. He was he was the like a very, genie genie head or something trapped in a crystal ball. That's a very popular tool. No, he was in a box. Oh, he was. Yeah, he was in a box that the doors open. I remember the box, but I thought he was, it was just like a a hologram floating head. I always thought he was in a crystal ball, but it's been a while since I've watched Pee Wee's Playhouse. Well, you're going to watch it later on so you can confirm or deny what I'm saying from memory. Yep. Well, R.I.P. That's a bummer. I always like seeing him pop up in the Cheech and Chong movies, too. Yeah. Pee Wee Herman was all over the place. I didn't even realize it. Yeah. I mean, he was in... He had a quick scene in Batman Returns, right? Mm Mm-hmm. That's because Tim Burton directed Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Yeah. And then he also was in... He was in the Gotham TV show that Dustin Ibarra was in as well. And I think he played Oswald Cobblepot's dad again in that. Tell them Large Marge sent you. Although I did. I did one time go see... I was trending on Twitter. What's it called? Uh, Nightmare Before Christmas at the Hollywood Bowl. And they got all of the voice actors and singers to come out during their parts. And I did see Pee Wee Herman go up on stage and do his part from that movie. That was pretty cool. Yeah, because he was one of Lock, Stock, and Barrel, right? He yeah, yeah. He's one of the one of shitty, three. shitty little kids. Yeah, cool, cool legacy. Some of it was kind of I mean, low key. I was happy to see him pop up in Mystery Men. Oh yeah, he was like the farty guy, right? He shot farts yep. at people. He was the sm- yeah the farty guy, the spleen. Yep. <laughs> Which okay, stupid question for the room. Does that mean farts come from spleens? I mean, that would imply that, but I don't. That's not true. Not my fart it comes right from my ass. <laughs> yeah, usually my farts come out of my butthole. But the spleen sounds better than the intestine or the stomach. I guess. I gotta Google this. Do farts come from the spleen? We're all gonna learn together today. Well save some, make sure we save some learning for Shuddy Boy's fucking news. It's not all I'm not drinking your milkshake. Yeah, no, no, no. Smarter, not darn Pee Wee Herman. Um, no, I was. I mean, sadly, this news happened just before we started recording, so we couldn't get our sad news anchor to come on. Yeah, I, I checked in with him, and he's in deep mourning. I think they had a few scenes together in some early cartoons. So yeah, I, yeah, I, I remember hearing a story that he was one of the other three. Yeah. In the theater. <laughs> yeah, he always felt tremendous guilt that his career was not derailed like Pee Wee's was. Uh, while gas is normal, splenic flexure syndrome can cause excessive gas and discomfort. Okay. S- splenic flexure syndrome? Great. Now I've got to fucking Google this. Because now well, I'm worried I that I have it. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Don't go down that rabbit hole. Don't do it to yourself. Okay, here we go. You guys ready for this? Splenic flexure syndrome is a disorder characterized by symptoms including bloating, fullness, and left upper abdominal pain, which are caused by the distended splenic flexure. How are you going to define the word I'm trying to figure out with the exact word? 
Oh, I guess it's also a type of irritable bowel syndrome. Well, splenic is going to be of the spleen and flexure. It's just terrible word. It's hate it. Curved, a cur- so a curved spleen, a curvature of your spleen. Oh. It'll make you fart a whole bunch. Wow, what a deep cut to name the farting character in Mystery Men, the spleen. Splenic flexure is a part of your colon or your large intent- intestine where it bends near your spleen. So if you have an issue with that part of the... I don't know. I don't know how it works. I don't understand why. If everybody has a splenic flexure, what splenic flexure syndrome is exactly? Splenic (laughs) flexure. But it's IBS. So that is a really, that's actually really intelligent. I never, I just thought it was just because it sounded funny. Yeah, so did I. Well, R.I.P. That movie's R.I.P. streaming anywhere. R.I.P. We. It really means it, but circle back in the important thing here and the reason why we started talking about this. That's yeah, the untimely passing of Pee Wee Herman. Pour some liquor out. Yep. We also had a uh, fairly successful MSPH wrestling over the weekend. It was nice to see some friendly faces on the Zoom. Uh, it was a you terrible. Speak for yourself, but I terrible think we showing. All took L's. Yeah, 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 we did all. Lo- we all lost. Yeah, that the MSPH wrestling sixteen summer shell shock uh, threw me, Jeff, and Shuddy into a human centipede. We yeah. all ate shit terribly. We have obviously upset the commish. Yep. Yeah, but um. The worst part is he hasn't even told us what we did or that he is even upset with us. He just fucking you blaming us for the sent, a, um. sent, a, sent assassins after us. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, I mean, a very surprising 30 man Royal rumble with, uh, the, the big winner being the fucking $11 trillion man. I feel like he's got a few wins under his belt. Oh, God! Is that why you played his whole speech earlier today? No, I was literally just trying to find a long clip so I could see why the iPad was so quiet. So I just let his whole rant play, which uh, you can enjoy in the Easter egg. It was very fun. Yeah, I mean, he pretty much warns everyone in the Royal Rumble what's going to happen. Yeah, he's a prophet, the $11 trillion man. Yeah, he's got his A-class license. <laughs> And his Cobb salad. <laughs> On God. On God. Oh God. Y'all bitches are stupid. Y'all bitches are stupid. I wonder if that guy's still alive. I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I jinxed myself in the Easter egg, but it has been very quiet in Poop Slime Alley lately. I can't wait for that to turn around. I wonder if it's just I think too hot. If you hear the eleven trillion dollar man outside, you have to go make friends with him. So he can be a part of his title shot at the next MSPH wrestling. I mean, do you hear the way this man speaks? I don't think he's in the making new friends business. <laughs> yeah, no new friends. He's yeah. just he's wrong with the crew that got him there. He's very angry. And I don't want him to power bomb me. He does always say in his rants, he's talking about power bombing hoes. I do not want to be one of them. What if he's like one of those guys that are real, like maybe he's just really nice when you talk to him? It's like he's just looking for a connection. Yo, bitches are stupid. I got my A license. 11 trillion. Excuse me, sir. Oh, yeah. What's up, dude? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, how can I help you? Like, see, we do this thing where our friend Dominic, uh, he has a wrestling video game and he makes. Uh, custom characters of everybody in our little universe and well you know what it's easier if i just show you why don't you come inside (laughs) of course i have beer yeah oh you're a bud light man interesting okay yeah i can accommodate (laughs) oh geez 
Well, hey. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for listening. That's it. We appreciate you. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. You got anything else you want to discuss, Jeff? Oh, I wanted you. I, I wanted to talk sports. You're gonna put me on the spot, huh? Oh, that's right. Shuddy does have a sports thing that's somehow MSPH related. I uh, because uh, training camps are now all in full swing for the thirty-two franchises of the National Football League. No preseason games have started yet, but I would like Kevin to do a pre preseason champion prediction. Okay. What what does that mean? <clears throat> that nothing there is no evidence of anywhere other than I mean, people will think they know what's going to happen, but there hasn't been a single down of football played yet this year. So do you want me to predict a down or two? What do I? I, what yeah, do I he wants you to predict the whole season and the outcome. Yeah, I want you to pre predict who's going to win the Super Bowl. Oh, right now. Right now. Okay. Well, and then we'll see after the preseason and the new. You know, after you follow the preseason, we'll see if you if you feel the same. Is there an easy way I can Google a list of all the NFL teams that exist? I think yeah. if you just Google the list of NFL teams, it'll <laughs> point in the right direction. You'd yeah. think, but every time I Google something, it's like, oh, here's the history of the tomato. And then. <laughs> That's, yeah, you know what? You don't want to find that. That's not going to help you here. Okay. List of NFL I'm gonna do it with teams. You. Okay. Okay. We got the Eagles, the Queefs, the Patriots. The Patriots are still, they still exist? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, wow. The four, the, they no longer have Tom Brady. The 49ers still exist. That's cool. <laughs> oh, wow. Pretty the, much, yeah, it's pretty much the same as, as you left it. Really. Yeah. The, the only difference is the Redskins are now the commanders. But they yeah. might be the Redskins again. You might have given up on football pre-Panthers and Jaguars. So that those could be that could be news to you. I don't know. Wait, hold on a second. Some, something weird just happened. What's AFT, AFC teams mean? Is, are they real? So yeah. NFC, there's two conferences, NFC and AFC, and the winner of oh. each of those conferences plays in the Super Bowl. So, so there, it's just – Yeah, if you, if you want to pick a winner of each conference – Yeah, pick, pick game, a team from the – Yeah, pick an NFC team and an AFC team. Oh, good Lord. This is a lot of work, guys. Um, well – Okay, let's do this. I say the Minnesota Vikings on one side, right? All right, that's the NFC, Minnesota Vikings. All right, now I have to Led pick an by AFC. Kirk Cousins. Yeah, he's one of the um, one of the main characters of the new Netflix show, Quarterback, which they just follow around Pat, Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota. Wow, I... Really? I would have sworn those are made up names. <laughs> okay, so now I have to pick another another team, right? Yep, yeah. from the AFC. Mm, these ones all look stupid. Is this like the the little league version? No. No. Oh, I see the Raiders. I I I'm, I know those. All right, got the Queefs. The Houston Texans. Man, they put 30 seconds of working to that name. The New Jersey, well, the, New that, Jerseyans. Um, when the Dallas Cowboys joined the NFL in the sixties, they were briefly known as the Dallas Texans. So when the Houston expansion franchise became a thing, they adopted that name. All right. You know what? On the other side, I'm going to give a shout out to my boy, Dan Marino and his isotoners and say the Miami dolphins. Nice. Who do you think wins between the Dolphins and Vikings? Vikings. Yeah, I, I, I could very, very easily picture a Viking beating up a Dolphin. All right. I mean, it's – both were playoff teams. Both of yeah. them starting quarterbacks, and that would be an interesting Super Bowl. It would be the craziest outcome. Let's see, uh, Minnesota, unless you know off the top of your head, 
What are the odds on the Vikings making it to the NFC championship uh, NFC champion? They have odds on that already. Oh yeah, they have odds on everything, dude. How did I do? Uh, they are currently plus four thousand. So you bet a hundred bucks, you win a four grand. Oh, wait to win the title. Wait, wait, the oh, that, I'm sorry, that's Super Bowl. That's Super Bowl odds. Oh, I so apologize. I picked very poorly. Plus 1,500 for the NFC Championship. Okay. Jeff, can I give you some money? So and you plus can... 4,000 for the Super Bowl, which is you say they're going to win. Yeah. So that's plus 4,000. Well, I have insider info. Jeff, can I give you money to um, parquet this into a bet? And then the Dolphins are plus 1,200. So that means... Another really you stupid bet, bet on my my. So for the Vikings, bet a hundred, win fifteen hundred. For the Dolphins, bet a hundred, win twelve hundred. Oh, I'm gonna be rich. When's the Super Bowl? So on DraftKings, they have a specific bet where you can pick the exact result. You can bet the Vikings to beat the Miami Dolphins in the Super Bowl, and it's plus forty thousand. You bet $100, you win $40,000. And I have to know the final score, too? No. No. Oh. Just the Vikings to beat the Dolphins is plus 40000 How much do I get if I if I only bet $5? Cash is really tight right now. Um, hold on, I'll put it in right now. You would get 2000 bucks. Nice. Does Uncle Sam get to take any of that? Of course. Yeah. That fucking kid toucher. He's always at it, huh? Let me see. Hold on. I have a guy that I bet through who Uncle Sam does not regulate. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Let me see if he has this market. He might not even have it. So, uh, hold on. I'll pull it up right what now. Sad the- <laughs> result. Um, oh, no. Nah. Oh, possible matchups and winner. Okay, yeah, we can do this. Does he have the same odds? Is it forty thousand dollars? I mean, Jeff's working on it. Kevin, be patient. What the hell, man? I don't know how these things work. I'm just asking questions. He he just has the matchup, so you don't even have to pick the winner. You just got to pick Dol- Vikings versus Dolphins, and that's plus twenty thousand. So See, it'd be that's five dollars to win a thousand bucks. That's where the smart money is. You heard it here first. But I have a minimum bet, so you have to do at least twenty five dollars. Man, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna steal your job, Jeff. Right no, I was just gonna say stay in your lane, Kevin, given how betting <laughs> given how bets. Kevin's pre preseason Super Bowl bet is Minnesota Vikings over the Miami Dolphins. Yeah. You think and you his reason a- is I could definitely see a Viking beating up a dolphin. You think you got a fat dick in your pants? Put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> And well, are you are you excited for football season, Jeff? Of course, it's been the first time the Giants have been expected to be kind of good coming into the year for I don't know, maybe the last seven or eight years. What a fucking nerd! It's obviously uh, the Eagles are the class of the NFC, but it, you know, it gives us something to chase. I am so pumped. Sharon and I are going to training camp on Sunday. Oh yeah. So dude. we're gonna as Kevin likes to say, we're gonna go watch practice. Yeah, you're going to plane school. You're gonna watch the Eagles <laughs> Eagles play the Eagles. Yep. And then watch people boo the Eagles when they make a bad move against the Eagles. The craziest thing yep. I've ever seen in my fucking life. <laughs> That's exactly what's gonna happen. And I cannot be more pumped. They just officially released the Kelly Green jerseys today. Like it's uh it's an yeah, exciting it's- time to be alive. This is the, my favorite time of year. Football is about to have its moment again. Yeah, very exciting. No, well, we had to follow up some Pee Wee Herman talk with a little bit of football. That's true. <laughs> Keep things well rounded. Actually, Shuddy's the only one that can talk about both. Yeah, he's the most well rounded of the two of the three yep. of us. My my feet are in two different worlds. We call that versatility, Kevin. Something you and I know nothing about. 
But hey, if you at home want to have your feet in both worlds, you can be a part of the free podcast as well as get one foot in Patreon land. And all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash mad scientist party hour. We do an extra show there every week. And then on the, uh, the $10 tier, a whole fucking slew of stuff. And if you've never peeked behind the curtain, if you've never breached the paywall, you get access to it all. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I mean, we've been going for, I don't know, close to six years, I think. So there's a mountain of stuff for you to consume. Roughly 300 Patreon episodes at least. Yeah, getting close there, getting close to 200 Kevin Kevin's Nerd Holes, getting close to 100 episodes of What the Fuck Did I Just Watch. Got like, I don't know, 50-something episodes of Supermarket Queefs. I've yeah, lost done. count of how many what we've done. Like, how many queef or no queefs have we done? Say sixty season and a half, but the second season's like a sixty episode season. So it's yeah, I think it's season. seventy. So we did thirty five, and then like a twenty episode. There's probably about sixty episodes of queef or no queef. Uh, and if you guys remind me, who won both seasons so far? Uh, the Dolphins. Who's, Two two and zero. Oh. Dolphins beat the Vikings, <laughs> which is not how Kevin called it. But hey, it happened. No, I mean it happened differently in Queef or No Queef, but in the real <laughs> world, much different. But yeah, check it out. And hey, you're also helping out your homies who have been at this for 13 years, tirelessly cranking out content. You know, it doesn't just have to be the famous people paying their bills. Yeah, they're on strike now anyways. Yeah, we can get a nice little slice, huh? Patreon.com. We haven't given up on you guys. Patreon.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. And if you also want to see these uh, episodes on YouTube, you never know. A ghost might knock over Shuddy Boy's He-Man statue. YouTube.com slash Mad Scientist Party Hour. And you can also follow us on Instagram. I'm at Kevin Craft. At Shuddy Boy. At Jeff R. Records. And at MSPH Podcast. And at John Cooper movie. And if you want to get some real sports insider stuff and not just, uh, my mindless drivel outkick bets with Jeff Clark. Oh, he even has numbers on, um, curling. No, no, I did not talk. (laughs) Jeff, Um, Jeff will bet football right down to slug racing and illegal cockfights. (laughs) Not totally true, but not totally false either. Uh, no, like like Shuddy talked about, this is we're hitting football season, so I'll be previewing uh, the AFC West and NFC West this week. So check it out on your podcast feed. Outkick bets with Jeff Clark. You said that was a lot of letters you just said. Yeah, it makes sense to the people who get it. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, I guess that's about it. Thank you for listening, everybody. But until next time, something. <laughs>